This is how marijuana has been traditionally grown for sale in California. These are some big ones in here. Illegally and in secret. This is uh, typical of organized crime. The state's nearly $6 billion marijuana black market isn't going away anytime soon because it supplies up to 80% of America's illegal weed. But recreational legalizations created a pot gold rush in California. This is definitely the one you're looking for. Like Officials it. and investors hope California's $2 billion medical pot industry will expand quickly and put the black market out of business. Researchers say legal pot could be worth as much as $5 billion this year. MedMen, California's biggest medical dispensary chain with five locations, aims to expand statewide thanks to recreational sales. Can you see more locations like this throughout the state once uh, full legalization absolutely. comes January absolutely. 1st? Yeah, absolutely. Every single street corner. MedMen expects their clientele to quadruple by banking on customers wanting to know exactly what they're getting. When you walk into a restaurant, they get nutritional information. That's the idea. You're replicating that experience? Correct, correct, yes. If you're going to have marijuana be legal in this country, that that's the only way this is going to work. The difference between the guy who sells pot to you on a street corner in a little baggie and a store like this is exactly this. You want that information. That's also true of the fastest growing segment of the medical cannabis industry, vape pens. I don't have to know like what strain is in any of these. They tell me exactly what I'm getting, which is really smart. Which one of these do you like the most? Um, my favorite one is Bliss. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Because you get the most faded, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> when cannabis pioneer Be Real helped found the iconic L.A.-based rap group Cypress Hill, there were no vape pens or fancy dispensaries. That was definitely taboo in, in the beginning, you know, when we put out our first record in 91. There's a lot of people, you know, that were going to jail with mere possession. Obviously, as, as stoners, we didn't think that was right, and we didn't want that happening to us. And there was a, a lot of propaganda against the cannabis culture at that point. So, you know, we, we sort of helped to tear that down. What do you think about how far things have come? It's extraordinary, to be quite honest. So you got your three cameras set up for your live shoots? Yeah. Eight years ago, he founded Be Real TV. You're one of the reefer kings, man. You're an one online network masters. devoted to music of, you know, and yeah. cannabis. So Fortunately, this caught for us, you know. In, in the beginning, you know, we had to make calls and say, hey, you know, can so-and-so come down and do an interview with us? Now people want to be booked on your show. Now people want to be booked on the show, and now people call us. The most popular show on Be Real TV is The Smoke Box, where celebrities smoke marijuana in Be Real's car. Oh, we're going to smoke up this whole... We're going to smoke up the whole car. Oh, wow. This is a beauty. So with full legalization, do you think this is going to become a stop on the movie promoting circuit and the politicians are going to want to stop by and see in the I smoke box? I would hope so. I would hope so. Who's your dream smoke box? Wow, obviously to have Obama in there. Obama. <laughs> you know, um, but I, I don't know if Obama could hang in there. That would be a little bit too much. It's, Is it still too taboo? Who knows, man? I mean, these days, I think everything is uh, up for grabs. I mean, when you look at who's president right now, <laughs> I mean, you can't put anything past any, anything. I now. don't think he or uh, Jeff Sessions will be sitting in the smoke box. No, that would be awesome, though, because I would get them so hammered. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.